on. So what are you guys? We are the Sparkwood family. Level. What's really difficult about the MCAT is how you use those concepts in different settings. So for example, what you could end up with is, um, you know about springs, right? You know, Hooke's Law, all that junk. But in terms of the test, you might see it like that. They could be nice, but a lot of times what to do is you'll see it in the passage. So you might see a passage about, say, a karate chop. So that would be something different. I think on crabs, not like hookup crabs, but like crabs that you have to stay in the ocean. So since I don't have time to do a passage with you, but I want to give you a feel for what the test is like and how it really does revolve around core concepts, let me try one problem out and let's see, okay? So let's say we have this problem. So let's say we have two forces, one of say 18 newtons and one of 35 newtons. And that's all we're told, okay? And the question is, which of the following cannot, so which of the following cannot be the magnitude of the sum of these two forces? So I got two forces, one of 18, one of 35. Which of the following cannot be the magnitude of the sum of those two forces? Okay. And of course, to make it a real problem, we need some answer choices. So, so let's try this out. So maybe, I don't know, 16, maybe something like 19, uh, maybe something like 32, and maybe something like 52. Why not? Okay. So give this a sec, try it out, and then we'll talk shop about it. So how do you do this problem? Do you do it the brainy way or do you do it the cheap way? So I always advocate doing the cheapest way humanly possible, but what if you try to do it the uber geek way? What would happen? So if we took this, 18 newtons, maybe this guy does this. If we took 35, maybe he's doing something like this. And maybe we try to relate them somehow, like this. Okay, the problem with that is we just don't know this info, right? Like all they told you were the magnitudes. I don't know if 35 points up. I don't know if it points down. It may even just point to the right along with 18. Right? In fact, I don't even know what 18 does. So the problem is, is that if you try to uber geek this out, and you try to pull up angles and components, it just won't work because we don't have that much info. Right? And more important than that, the test is not about that. Right? The test is about simple core concepts being applied in different situations. So let's look at this guy. Probably the easiest way to do it, to frame it, is to think extremes. Right? So here's a push. Here's another push. Let me switch up chalk. Okay. So something like that. In fact, that'll be me pushing, that'll be you. So let's go to extremes. What's the very best we can do? The very best we can do is I push with 18, you push with 35. Together, we can do 53. Do you guys agree? Okay. What's the worst we can do? The worst we can do is you push, I push against you. Obviously, you overpower me, but by how much? Maybe you beat me by 17. Do you guys agree? So the best we can do is work together. The worst we can do is we fight, you beat me, and you beat me by 17. Okay. So anything in between, I think, is fair game, right? That's the best, that's the worst, anything in between we can do. OK, so let's look at these guys. So if I look at 52 over here, the problem is, well, it's not a problem. It's actually in the range, right? So 52 is good. 32, 32 is in the range. It's good. 19, 19 is close, but he's still clean, right? Look at 16. Even in the worst case scenario, you're going to beat me by 17. So there's no way we could hit 16. Do you guys agree? So what's the point of doing this problem, aside from you know, getting the answer, right? It's to look at the test and see, have a window into what the test is like. 